Are we getting close to basically eliminating people being hard of hearing? Yes. Wow, that's incredible. And I remember when my son had a, a horrible earache. We were coming back from Disneyland. I started hitting up my doctor friends. They all say, hit up Ronan. <laughs> How did you build that credibility? You have to be the three A's. You have to be available, you have to be affable, and you have to be able. Mm. The difference between what I do and maybe something that someone does who's like a cosmetic surgeon, mm -hmm. you know, you're changing someone's appearance. But with hearing surgery, you're actually changing who they are. When I was a resident, I never even thought I was going to go into ear surgery. And then I, w I was on that rotation where we did a cochlear implant on a baby. Mm -hmm. And just seeing that moment made me realize that that is what I was born to do. Welcome to Law Flip. It's a conversation about law, life, medicine, and everything in between. So when I was five years old, my father had a terminal prognosis. That meant he was supposed to die, but he survived. And that is one of the reasons why I have the utmost respect for doctors. So guys like our guest today, remind me why I have that type of respect. He's a prominent otologist and restorative hearing surgeon at Cedar sinai in Los Angeles, one of the hottest hospitals in the world. He gives people the gift of sound, from hearing impaired to being able to enjoy the music of life. He's an inspiration. Welcome to Ronan Nazarian. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me, Benji. Of course. So don't forget to follow us everywhere on social media at LawFlip and subscribe and call us at our new phone number. Ronan, you're going to repeat this with me. 1-833-LAWFLIP. Let's go. 1-833-LAWFLIP. Okay. So how are you feeling, my man? I'm feeling great. Thank you for that warm introduction. Yeah, and that man. introduction that went that took place behind the scenes. Yeah. That was very nice. Yeah, absolutely. We had a good, good time. We uh, we got to see each other before filming today and it's just nice. It's a late night. It's 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 toasty. We're having a good time. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, in layman's terms, how do you help people hear again? So in layman's terms, um, if you or someone you know has some hearing loss and they've tried hearing aids or they're over with hearing aids or hearing aids don't give them any benefit at all. They basically come to me for mm -hmm. an evaluation and we figure out if they can be candidates for a surgical operation where we can restore their hearing. Now, um, it's not just about hearing, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, or, the ear organ is also responsible for your balance. So mm -hmm. most of your balance does come from your inner ear. And when you say uh, balance, you're talking about like, like walking. Yeah. Just like knowing like how you're upright or, you know, if you have vertigo or things like that, yeah. you know, a lot of times that can come from the ear and that's when I come in as well. And we evaluate that and we can treat, uh, hearing loss uh, and balance issues, both medically and surgically. And you can take someone who literally is hearing impaired completely and turn it around, or do they have to have some semblance of hearing in order to be Right, able to... so we don't call them hearing impaired anymore. That's kind of fallen out of uh And here I vote. thought I was doing the right yeah. piece. Right? I thought, you I, thought, I thought that, cause right? Because I, I honestly, I was, gonna, I was gonna say deaf, and I was like, no, that sounds wrong. Give me the yeah. right way to say so it, So it's me. the heart of hearing. H of or H O H. That's how you can write it. Okay. Hard of hearing. We help okay. the hard of hearing. All right. That's very helpful. Okay. Because so hearing impaired makes you feel like they have some type of disability, disability. and uh, it's uh, it's you know it's more empowering to just say hard of hearing. That's helpful to know. Okay. Yeah. So Helen Keller, famously both hard of hearing and uh, blind, she said blindness cuts us off from things, but deafness cuts us off from people. I know we're not using deaf anymore, but yeah. how much psychological pain? are your patients in when they come to you? That's one of my favorite quotes, actually. So I'm glad you found that. And uh, it's very true. So what you see is that uh, the patient is cut off from the world around them, from the people around them. And, it's, and most of the time when uh, patients come to me, it's not just them coming to me, it's more their family members mm. that are coming along with them. Because I don't know if you had anyone in your family who's hard of hearing, but a lot of times it's frustrating uh, for everyone uh, around, around that person, yeah, right? And I know that from when I was a kid, you know, I had several people in my family who were hard of hearing and, and, and the whole family was involved 
uh, with 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 that pathology. Mm -hmm. You know, we were we. Uh, it didn't just affect that relative; it affected everyone around them. Yeah, and it's interesting. The those are like the big, um, the really big relational challenges. Uh, but then you start to think about other things, like what happens if you're in a dark room? How do you how do you deal with this in a work context? It permeates. I mean, you never hear the toilet flush. I mean, right. literally permeates every single aspect of your life. What are some of the things maybe that you've seen or that you know just from so, yeah. so much treatment that they experience that maybe the rest of the world isn't considering? You forget how much you rely on the subtleties of communication, right? So just things like, uh-huh, you know, just, just hearing that. If you miss that, you, you, you might lose a conversation or someone might interp interpret. If you, if you don't get those little audio cues, um, uh, you can be lost in a complex conversation. And then people might think that, you know, is this guy stupid? Is mm -hmm. this guy not following me? Like what's, what's wrong with them? And a lot of times hearing loss, or at least traditionally hearing loss was, um, uh, 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 it, it would go together with maybe some lack of intelligence. And mm -hmm. that's actually not true at all. Sure. Right. It has nothing to do with intelligence, but because someone with, isn't, isn't yeah, it? and someone with hearing loss might just get lost in the conversation and you might just interpret that as lack of intelligence. But in reality, they're just lost in a conversation because they can't hear you. And what's crazy about what you do is it's so much about timing, right? Because 50 years ago, somebody that was hard of hearing, they basically have to live with it as far as I know. Now you, the same person, he's just lucky enough to be born yeah. now. Yeah. Um, how, how grateful are you to the science that's allowed yeah. you to, to, to be able to do this? That's what inspired me to go into this field because it's probably the only field in, in medicine where you can restore someone's sense, okay? I don't think you can do that to any other of your senses. You can fully restore a, a sense that you might be missing. Um, I tell my patients all the time, you know, you're so lucky to be alive in a time where no matter what degree of hearing loss you have, something can be done for it. You know, I think that's just crazy. Like, and you're right, 50 years ago, that wasn't the case yeah. or 40 years ago or whatever. Like we're living in a time now that no matter what degree of hearing loss you have, we can do something about it. And that's kind of reassuring to my patients. You know, I have patients that have progressive hearing loss and they're scared. You know, they're like, should I start learning how to, you know, how to sign? Mm. And you know you don't have to anymore. Back in the day, you, you might have had to, or your if your child was born deaf, uh, you definitely need to put them into sign language school. That's not the case anymore. If your child is born deaf, um, you can definitely give them a cochlear implant, and they can go to uh, regular school and uh, get you know the the same jobs that everyone else gets. Wow. You know, we've had people that grew up to be debate champions, telemarketers. Uh, no matter what, you know, anything that, 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 uh, requires hearing. that requires hearing. A lot of us, we have challenges that we experience our whole life. And so for me, I've had challenges where, you know, I've seen every specialist, I've gone to every place and you just get frustrated and you never believe that there's actually going to be a solution for you. I got to imagine, you know, there are people, whether they, maybe they didn't have access to it because of funds, maybe they didn't have yeah. access to it because the science wasn't there. Yeah. There must be, when they come to you, there must be a sense of distrust, a skepticism that like, yes, I've been told a million times before, this hearing aid is gonna help me. This, yeah. how, do you, how do you deal with that skepticism? Cause it's, I mean, it's obviously yeah. fair for them to have it. There's, there's definitely a lot of snake oil mm -hmm. being sold out there. You know, it's that's just always been like that. Um, when they come to my office, it's more like, well, we didn't know something like this existed. You know, nobody told us you know, we've, we've had hearing loss for 20 years and nobody told us that this might be an option. What do you attribute that to? Is it just a lack uh, of education it's, it's, around it? It's, I, I bet most of the viewers right now, when, when they're listening, maybe they don't know anything about, if you say the word cochlear implant, I don't think most people know what that means. That's true. You know? I kind of didn't know that either. Yeah. But if you think about it, if you ask your parents um, if they knew anyone in their neighborhood who was deaf or who would sign, your parents would probably tell you that they definitely knew somebody like that growing up. Uh, you and I basically don't know anyone really. I don't know if you know anyone from I just growing figured, up that was that yeah, was why uh, yeah. So, so, are, so is deaf. this the type of thing like are we getting close to basically eliminating 
people being hard of hearing? Yes. Wow. So it can happen. Now, um, it's a, also a, a sensitive subject though, because the deaf community does have this um, identity and- um, Let's just stop you real quick. Yeah. You refer to deaf community, is it okay? Is so, <laughs> so is deaf, is that okay? So we, we can you can say the deaf community, uh -huh. but I don't know if it's okay to call someone deaf. Got it, got it, got it, um, okay. Um, you know, di different people are, you sure. know, it's, 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 there's a spectrum. Things. Sure, sure, sure. But the deaf community, traditionally, they, they had this identity um, and sense of pride, and it was a, a culture. Mm -hmm. And in the deaf community, everyone signs. And the deaf community was very proud to say that deafness is not a disability. Mm -hmm. And they actually would come in, in opposition to a lot of the doctors who did research early on to do, uh, to do cochlear implant surgery and wow. things like that that would get rid of deafness. And uh, you know they would come and protest and they basically thought of this surgical operation as experimental mm -hmm. and that we're trying to change them from who they are. That's and so that you should be proud to be deaf. Like there's a community around people being healthy, overweight. Like don't try to force people to be, you know, a healthy body weight. So I, yeah. I, 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 that's right. so interesting. So there was a lot, I mean, maybe in the eighties and nineties, it was a lot more than it is today, but there is a lot of empowerment in that, in that community. And it's hard sometimes to get through because there's a lot of pride there. Mm. And if, if you have a child if you are deaf and you have a child who is deaf, it's hard to get that child to get a cochlear implant Why? because the parent is is very proud of being deaf and they don't they don't see it as a disability. Wow! Because with sign language, they could, you can basically do you can do anything. Wow! So uh, the good thing is is that ninety percent of ch of children who are born deaf are born to normal hearing parents. So, so usually, this is a big struggle. There are people that are deaf. They've they've had to experience that their whole life, and they um, they are unwilling, based on a variety of factors, to provide that to their children because they have come to accept it. They either come to accept it, or they're scared of the surgery. Yeah, there's you know usually that surgery has to be done on a, uh, on the child when they're one year old, mm -hmm. and sometimes a parent. It, you know, that's too much for them to undergo yeah. this type of surgery and they, they hold off. But the main thing is, is that 90% uh, of the kids who are born deaf, they have normal hearing parents. And most of the time those parents do wanna go ahead and do the surgical operation so their child can hear and live a normal life. But there's still 10% of deaf children who are born to deaf parents. And of those people, how many people opt it, to do it's, it? It's hard to get the, uh, those people to, Boy, to get the surgery fascinating. done. So, but, but it is changing, the culture is changing. Yeah, rare does someone get to make as much of an impact on someone's life as you get to do. What type of weight does that carry uh, when you perform the procedure? Or, and also, yeah. uh, how does it feel to be able to give that blessing? It feels great. I can't really describe it or show it. You know, it's hard to show how you can make someone here. I really try to uh, portray that to my friends and people on social media, but it it is uh, such a rewarding feeling when you turn someone who is basically turned off from the world and you turn them back on into the social world. It's just incredible. The difference between what I do and maybe something that someone does who's like a cosmetic surgeon, mm -hmm. you know, you're changing someone's appearance. Uh, you're changing something fu functional. Um, but with hearing surgery, you're actually changing their brain a little bit. You know, they're you're turning them on back into the hearing world. You're changing their way of life. You're not just changing the way they they look or or the way they function. You're changing who they are. Wow, that's incredible. And I remember when my son had a, a horrible uh, earache. We were coming back from Disneyland, had this amazing day and like earache starts to explode. I start hitting up my doctor friends. They all say, hit up Ronan. <laughs> how, how did you build that credibility? You know, it's uh, a lot of uh, friendships over the years, uh, trying to not, never trying to burn any bridges. Um, uh, you know, always being available. I don't know what they say to lawyers, but uh, to doctors, they say, you know, when you're starting a practice, you have to be the three A's. 
You have to be available. You have to be affable, and you have to be able. Mm. Okay, those are the three A's. And I don't know. I don't know if you can apply that to long. Yeah, you can apply it to anything. But uh, if if you're always available, you know, you're affable, you're likable, and you're actually able. Like you, they not only come to you to get treatment, but they actually get results. You know that that news spreads pretty fast. Yeah. And uh, you get to be successful. Yeah, that's amazing. And what other what other types of things have you learned um, that you put into practice every day? Because I I mean when I when I actually came for a for a consult with you and it's yeah. just it's just a full on professional top notch. The moment you get there, um, and you just have this personal attention that you give. Yeah. Um, but but you also like I say I, I usually only have people on here that seem happy with what they do. Yeah. Um, there are probably people that do what you do and still aren't happy. Yeah. What do you do to make yourself happy? So that's a very good question. And that, you know, from early on, I said, what do I do to not get burnt out, right? Burnout is a big problem right now. It's a big problem for a lot of professionals. Uh, I know, I'm sure a lot of lawyers get burnt out. We know that for you sure. Know, so I, I went, you know, after I graduated residency fellowship, I said, what is the magic formula to not getting burnt out? And, uh, and, and I thought to myself, I said, you know, I still want to be a doctor. I love being a doctor. And what is the 20 year old me going to think uh, about me, you know, who, of, of who I am now? Is the 20 year old me going to be proud of the doctor that I am today? You know, the, you know what was the driving so what, force what, yeah, so for what, me to go into medical school? What did, what did I want when I said, I want to be a doctor mm. and I'm trying to, to live that life. Um, and I think that's maybe the secret to, to not getting burnt out. The other thing is I, I really try to separate the, the business yeah. from, the, from the care. How you know? do you do that? Um, um, and, we, and we talked about this a little bit. We're both in legacy businesses, medicine. Yeah. It's hard to change things. I'm a lawyer, yeah. it's hard to change things. How do you operate a good business right. and be a good doctor? So I don't chase the money. So basically I just go every day to try to give good care, to do what's right for the patient, to do what's best for the patient, to make sure that I have the environment that gives me the best results and then the rest follows. And what do you do about the, just the challenges of bureaucracy, of insurance and Medicare and this and that? So that's why I'm kind of in the practice setting that I'm at right now. I'm not in a high volume practice setting. A lot of doctors now are, are doing a, a volume business because you know with with insurance reimbursements going down, um, you know the only way to really fight back is to see more and do more. And I'm just trying to fight that and just you know see a certain number of patients per day, not rush the visits when I come in uh, to see the patient, and you know try to keep it low volume and quality care. Mm -hmm. And and I can leave at the end of the day and be happy with what I did. I didn't rush anyone. I got to give them the, the treatment they deserve. I took my time and good care equals good results. Yeah. And that's 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 an advertisement on, on, on its own because yep. the patients that walk out with the good results are walking advertisements. Absolutely. The cost. So um, we talked about this a little bit before about how there are people that you know are listening to this or they come into your office and they've never even heard of cochlear implants. Um, what do you do to address the high cost, likely high cost, I'm assuming there's a yeah. high cost of these surgeries. Yeah. How How is your community dealing with like the poor communities that just don't have access to this stuff? Believe it or not, cochlear implants are covered by most insurances. Okay. So what about like Medi-Cal, like the state sponsored type Medi-Cal does, it's a little bit tougher yeah. to, to get approved, but Medicare okay. approves cochlear implants if, if you meet the right criteria. That's great. And most private insurances will also uh, approve it. Every now and then we do have to, we get people who have no insurance and we have to figure out a good price for them, you know, but the, but the main cost of that type of surgery is the implant. So when you have insurance, it's nice, mm -hmm. but sometimes when you don't have insurance, that cost can be pretty, pretty high, like. Prohibitive. Like it's, it's like the cost of a car, yeah. you know, to get the surgery. It's like, it's like buying a, it's like buying an Acura. It's fascinating. I did not know before this interview that there was a, like that you could theoretically end 
uh, you know, loss of hearing for people. But yeah. to the extent that it still exists, because obviously it still exists, there's still people that are unwilling to get the surgery. Maybe they're not, you know, they, they can't get it for one reason or another. How can we as people uh, and we as a society be more sensitive to those who have a loss of hearing? Like, what do we do? It's a big problem because it's, you, you know, you think it's tough to get them to get surgery, but it's, it's also tough to get someone just to admit that they have hearing loss and to get a hearing aid. So think about that. So there's a, maybe I was reading an article where like, 50 to 80% of people who can qualify to get a hearing aid don't get a hearing aid, mm. okay? So then Im imagine out of that group of people, the people who actually need the surgery, mm. you know, it's even, it's even less. It's, it's very tough to get somebody to admit that they have, you know, someone who used to hear before, for them to admit that they have hearing loss and that they need treatment for it. You know, there's a stigma behind it. There's a big stigma behind it because everyone thinks that hearing loss means that you're getting old, you know. And if you wear a, a, a little hearing aid, then that's a sign that you're an old that you're mm -hmm. that you're old now, sure, you know, and that you're uh, that you don't count anymore. Uh, so people really fight that, you know. So I've seen these videos that you do. They do these incredible videos, like basically like the story of them coming to you, and then they get the implant, and then they hear for the first time. What is, is there like a one moment that stands out to you, like one of the greatest moments that you've had in, you know, when the first time they heard, uh, uh, one of your patients heard something? Or what was actually the first time that you ever performed it and then you saw that they were able to hear something later? Yeah, that's how I got into it to begin with. Um, I was a resident. I never even thought I was going to go into ear surgery or hearing restoration surgery. I thought I was gonna be like an oncologist or something mm -hmm. or, or like a plastic surgeon or something like that. And then I, w I was on that rotation where we did a cochlear implant on, on a baby. Mm -hmm. And I actually got to go on the activation. And it the was just- Activation is when you actually like test when you to see When you turn it, it on, yeah. yeah. And, and just seeing that moment um, made me realize that that is what I was born to do. Incredible, uh, incredible. Yeah. Okay, deal of the week. If you need help, and just like we talked about before, you know, if you need help, do something about it. If you need help in business, get a coach. So in my old life, I would have said, what is this bullshit about a business coach? What is this? You don't need a business coach. Just work your ass off. But these days, I'm a much more evolved person. Okay, Ronan? <laughs> Look at that beautiful smile. We were waiting to get that beautiful Aww. smile. Um, so I'm open to self-improvement in any way, shape, or form. Welcome, Jim Glantz. We hired this guy at the recommendation of my friend, Josh Walter. This guy, he came to us at the beginning of the pandemic. We had a bunch of challenges. And this guy, he's just super skilled, experienced, um, and he's really helped us tremendously. And I want to give a shout out to him. He's my deal of the week. I'll give a link to anybody who wants to his uh, contact information. And I just recommend you, if you have any challenge in your life, hearing, weight, business, whatever the hell it is, go get the help if it's out there. And it's generally out there. Ronan, what is your deal of the week? So I'm going to give a little bit of a selfish deal of the week. Um, That's what we do here. We're all yeah, about it's, ourselves. It's, it's, okay. it's, it's Corona time, you know? Yeah, it's like, you uh, got it. We're not, we're, there's, there's no deals out there. <laughs> but but <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll give you a selfish deal. Um, <laughs> we did open up a, um, a, a new office location. So if anyone watching uh, wants to get an ear exam, a hearing test, or ear cleaning, uh, I'll do it on the house um, all through October. That's incredible. Just, uh, just call the office and say that you were sent by Lawflip. Just say Lawflip <laughs> and call this number down here, 323-433-7744. That's our Miracle Mile office. I just started working there. Incredible. And um, I'll, I'll see you free of charge for hearing tests and hearing exam and uh, ear cleaning. Amazing. Deal, deal of the week. That is incredible. I said it's valid till the end of October, but I think this this is going to air like at the end of October. So it's valid till Thanksgiving, okay? Just call the Miracle Mile office, 
I will take care of you. Just say law flip. Good till luck. Till no. <laughs> till, till Thanksgiving. Good till Thanksgiving. Okay. <laughs> Don't come after Thanksgiving. <laughs> as, as a offer, offer. You cannot come a day after yeah. Thanksgiving. That deal will not be honored. Offer is available while supplies last. <laughs> and the supply <laughs> is me. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. Okay. We're off to Legal Tip of the Week. It's sponsored by Smith & Benowitz. It's a, it's a great law firm. I'm, I, at least I'm going to say it. Um, okay, so it's a personal injury, employment, and class action law firm. We're the hottest law firm in the country. And I know that because, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> because you know that. Because <laughs> I know that. Okay. Because you so, are. Because we are. Okay, so as long... Here's my legal tip of the week. As long as you reasonably believe, reasonably believe that your employer is doing something illegal and you complain about it, you cannot be fired for that thing. That would be called retaliation. So retaliation is when someone like punches you and you knock them out, right? So that's what retaliation is. If you go to your employer and you say, I'm complaining about A, B, and C, even if it turns out not to be illegal, they can't fire you for it. If someone does retaliate against you, God forbid, you know who to call. Nice. Ronan, thank you so much for joining us. Truly is inspiring. It was definitely serious, but in between, I got to see that beautiful face, have a few yeah. laughs. We appreciate it. I want you to tell the people, where do they find you online and anywhere else? And any parting words? You can... Best find me online on Instagram. Just put in Ear Doctor LA Woo! and you'll find that's me. That's a hot handle. Yeah. Ear Doctor LA. At Ear Doctor LA. Dude, that's amazing. And um, um, you can call the office if you want. 323-433-7744. Uh, that's my new location in Miracle Mile. And uh, I'd love to see you. Okay. Amazing. Thank you so much. We will see you next week, Law Flip. Do that. Law Flip, Law Flip, objection, your honor. Turn, turn the game upside down. Law Flip, Law Flip, objection, your honor. Turn the, turn the game upside down. Okay, so Arian, they're asking where they could find us. So for Law Flip, it's at Law Flip and lawflip.com. For Smith & Benowitz, our law firm, which does personal injury employment and class actions, you could find us at at Smith Benowitz and smithbenowitz.com. For the personal stuff, like where you're really going to find the juicy stuff, at Benji Smith and BenjiSmith.com, at WagesGuru and LewisBenowitz.com for Lewis. Oh, so Law Flip is produced, directed, and edited by the young legend Aryan Tabibi and visual effects and compositions by another young legend, Oren Azad. Intro music provided by Pen Practice. Pen Practice, what is it? Premium instrumentals for upcoming artists by the music industry's top producers. For more info, visit penpracticemusic.com. I had so much fun recording the intro song with my man Hilton Deuce Wright. Looking forward to hearing more and more from Pen Practice. So the Law Flip identity, this hot logo that you're looking at, created by Garrett Whiston and Travis Nagel. Special thank you to Shy and Seth from the Horwitz Marketing Agency. And lastly, this podcast is made available by Smith & Benjamin for educational and entertainment purposes only. It is only intended to provide general information and opinions about legal and other concepts and is not intended to be used as a source of legal advice or relied on for legal advice. By listening to this podcast, you understand that no attorney-client relationship is being formed between you and Smith & Benowitz or any of its attorneys. This podcast should not be used as a substitute for competent legal advice from a licensed professional attorney in your state.